A few years ago, I left a job at a big tech company to launch my own apps, websites, and startups. Now, in the tech world, we talk about two types of entrepreneurs who go off and launch their own projects. On one hand, you have technical entrepreneurs. These are people who know how to write code and use that ability to build apps. And on the other hand, you have non-technical entrepreneurs. These are usually people who handle the business side. Now, I myself am a non-technical entrepreneur. So you can see how I was faced with a unique challenge when I left a job at a big tech company to launch my own apps, websites, and startups. When we think about the types of people who build apps, this is what we think of. Mark Zuckerberg, who built Facebook in his college dorm room by building code. And Larry Page and Sergey Brin, who built Google in their garage, also by writing code. These guys have achieved really, really phenomenal things, but today, I'm not talking about them or their process. Today, I'm talking about what to do if you don't know how to write code, but you still have a really interesting idea for technology. Because today, something really interesting is happening for the first time. You no longer need to know how to write code in order to build apps and websites and even algorithms. I myself know this firsthand. I built several apps without writing a single line of code. And when I first started doing this, I sat down at my computer and I opened up Google and I typed in the words without code. And what I was surprised to find were a slew of resources that were available to me that I wouldn't have traditionally associated with building apps. The first thing I found were existing software tools that I already knew about that were based in logic. For example, I found surveys that allowed me to show and hide different information based on who the user was, just like you would do in an app. And I found spreadsheets that allowed me to apply additional logic. If this, then that. You can actually power the back end of your app just by connecting different Google spreadsheets. And I found email marketing tools. If this, send that. And I Here's an example of one of the very first versions of an app that I built called Collecto, which helps people find cool art for their homes. I used survey logic to show thousands of my users personalized art recommendations based on their taste. And I did that by showing and hiding different pieces of artwork based on who the user was. One of the biggest things I've learned while building without code is how to use existing software tools that I already knew about in unintended ways. Once I found the tools that I needed, I had to find a way to connect them all together. So the first version of this art app I'm showing you heavily relied on a software tool called Zapier, which allows you to connect different softwares together. So every time a new user would sign up or do a new action, I would send that information over to a spreadsheet. And every time data in the spreadsheet changed, I would set, trigger a new action to happen. And while all of these things were connecting and speaking to each other in the back end and the front end, I was starting to create an experience that felt very much like an interactive web app for my users. Now, all of this might sound a little bit crazy to you, but when we think about some of the first versions of our favorite apps that we use today, they didn't look all that great when they first launched. Here's what Facebook looked like in 2004 when it launched. It simply lets you log in, follow friends, and poke them. <laughs> and here's what Twitter looked like when it first launched. It was a very simple SMS text message service that allowed you to send text message updates to your friends. So whether you know how to code or not, the purpose of building the first version of your app should never be to build something perfect. After all, if you're not embarrassed of the first version of your product, then you've launched too late. 
So if the purpose is not to build something perfect, then what in the world is the goal? Well, I would say the goal is to build something fast, get it in front of your users, start seeing how they respond so you can iterate on that. One of my favorite examples of a quick and dirty launch was built by a team called AirDev, which is an agency that helps people build apps without code. Now, the AirDev team built a really cool app called NotRealTwitter.com. And NotRealTwitter.com has a phenomenal introduction that I want to read to you because I think it's a profound testament to the changing ecosystem of people and types of people who can build apps. So this is what the introduction to NotRealTwitter.com says. Welcome to Not Real Twitter. <laughs> Just like Twitter, but worse, a lot worse. The purpose of this site isn't to steal Twitter's business or to give people a chance at a fresh social media start. This site was built by a, a software engineer. He didn't use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. In fact, he didn't write a single line of code, and he built it in four days. Because in 2020, most programmers won't be engineers. They'll be doctors, teachers, farmers, and executives. Enjoy Not Real Twitter, built using a really interesting platform called Bubble. And then the introduction closes with a really great note that says, a quick note to Twitter, please don't sue us. <laughs> so this is a really humorous example, but it's also a really great example of an interactive web app that you can build without writing any code. So on notrealtwitter.com, I can create a Twitter handle, I can log in, I can post tweets, I can follow friends, they can favorite my tweets, I can favorite their tweets, etc. It's a fully functioning web app that was built without any code. So there are resources out there. If you're not using a platform like Bubble, which Not Real Twitter was built on to build your app, then you can string together a series of your own tools that you already know about to build your app experience. Now, as a non-technical creator, I get a chance to talk to a lot of other non-technical folks. And while they never say these words, what's very clear is that these people feel handicapped because they don't know how to write code. But what these folks don't yet realize is that building without code can be a strength and not a handicap. When you're focused exclusively on writing code, it can be hard to come up for air and focus on your customers. A friend of mine who is a software engineer and does write code says, hell is building fancy stuff that nobody uses. So while everyone else is busy building the perfect app, you use the restraints that you have of not knowing how to write code to your advantage, to build something fast, to get it in front of users, to spend less time on perfection and code, and more time seeing how people respond to the user experience you've created. And by doing that, you can be really successful at launching an app for your local bakery, small business, or building an algorithm that helps people find art like I've built, or build a website for that idea you've been thinking of. All you have to do is find the resources and start building because that's what we do in Detroit. We build. This talk is about building without code, but above all, it's about rolling up your sleeves and finding a way to launch no matter what. It's about not letting your ability or inability to do something act as a handicap, and it's about realizing that above everything else, successful people find a way to start before they're ready. Thank you.